Last week on part one of Visions Restored, Hearts Renewed, we brought you a documentary highlighting the work being carried out by the Medical Educational Aid to Kenya, MEEK, at the Masai Mara. From the Masai Mara, we head down to the coast. Here, the MIG team was to carry out open heart surgeries on the children of the less fortunate in the society. We began by speaking to Mike Bellier about the project here. We're here on this occasion to do a cardiac mission, working for the first time at the Mombasa Hospital. We've been delighted at the response that we've received in Mombasa from everybody associated with the mission. He explains to us about the prohibitive costs of these surgeries and why they decided to get into it. Cardiac surgery is available in Kenya. There are four or five hospitals in Nairobi that, that will do it. But by and large, um, for the children of impoverished families, the chances of raising the kind of money uh, needed to do paediatric surgery is virtually nil. You're just not going to get it. So how many have they done so far? And what was their target this particular trip? We have now carried out, this is the 15th, I think, mission, um, operating on anywhere between 18 and 25 children each time. We've managed to operate on 16 children, all of whom have had serious heart problems and now are hopefully going to have a full and healthy life. Mike also tells us about some of the patients who they have operated on in the past. The child that came down from Moyali near the Ethiopian border, we, my wife found her up there when we were doing an eye mission up there and uh, arranged for her to come down, flew her down and we carried out what's called a ventricular septal defect on her. One of these children is Mohammed. What was so unique about Mohammed's case? Asa ni kamza vizuri, kilozake kawa 3.7, akawa normal baby. Lakini sasa, tuka mguindua kwa hii lipsi yake zilikuwa ziko black. Alafu akili ya likuwa tan blue. Na kucha zake zilikuwa kumuisho ziko black, kumuisho at the end ziko black. Asa ndo, haka kuwa mguindua alifu kuna 3 months, mkenda nae kwa Dr. Karega, pandia hospital. Kufika kwa ke ndo, haka umexami na kasema mtoto, ana possibility ya kuwa na heart problem. And then there was also their ages, which ranged from very young to teenagers. This particular trip saw them operate on a boy who was just two and a half months old, all the way up to a 15-year-old girl. The youngest child we worked on here, on this trip, was two months old. Um, the youngest child we've ever worked on was three days old in uh, Kenyatta National Hospital on the, on the last trip, three day uh, old infant. So we can actually handle little babies with tiny little hearts about the size of uh, a tangerine. We then head out to Mombasa Hospital, a non-profit run organization that donated their facilities for this particular purpose. It is here we decided to have a chat with NASA, the hospital administrator who tells us a bit about the hospital. Now the Mombasa Hospital is a not-for-profit private hospital managed by a board of management and it is an association of members and members are the ones who elect a board of management to run the hospital. What made them decide to make this contribution to the community? Mombasa Hospital owes an obligation to the people of Mombasa and Kenya as a whole and this is part of our corporate social responsibility that we give in to the people who cannot afford. I mean, without MIC, without the Mombasa Hospital, without the Pediatric Support Group, and of course, the various donors who have uh, chipped in, this surgery would not have been possible. And I'm just imagining what would have happened to those children who really needed this surgery. A contribution not to be taken lightly, as we are made to understand,
intensive care unit. You could see the number of children who were accommodated there. And uh, I could see smiling faces of the mother and the children who would not have otherwise been able to afford that surgery because cardiac surgeries are very expensive both in Kenya and overseas. For the duration of the operations, the ICU was strictly for use by the post-operation children alone, as were the wards once they left the ICU. This means that for the duration of the operations, the hospital could not take any paying customers. And all they ask for is some donations from well-wishers out there. This is Lydia Washu. What started off as a cold went on to be diagnosed as a heart condition. Alianza tu siku hiyo akasema anasikia homa. Alafu akapelekwa hospitalini. Alipopelekwa hospitalini akatibiwa siku hiyo akapatiwa dawa akarejea nyumbani. Zile dawa akaendelea kutumia kwa hiyo siku. Ule siku wake hadi kabadilika ikawa sasa homa tena. Ikawa kifua, anakohoa na ilikuwa inasikikana ni ile dry cough. She goes on to tell us about the untold suffering her daughter went through and all the various tests conducted. Alipokuwa ameanza alipokuwa yuko na hali mbovu sana. Alipokuwa ameanza kutibiwa nikaona ile hali imerudi nyuma. Lakini kitu kwa kinishangaza ni kwamba mtu atakuwa bado anaendelea tu kukonda hata kama nimempatana na anaendelea tu kukonda. Miaka yake hata yani hayambatani hata na yani ile age na miaka iko tofauti. Age ni nyingi lakini anaonekana ni mdogo ni kama yani hakuu hata kwa tunajiuliza kwa nini alafu pia mbali na hivyo hii heart ile kupiga kwake hii tamu yote hajasoma last time mwezi huu wa mwisho hajasoma na hata pia hizo siku zingine alikuwa akienda akienda wiki moja wiki nyingine tu iko nyumbani na ni mtoto anapenda kusoma anakaa nyumbani kama mimi ananihuzunisha ananiambia mami mimi watu watafanya mtani ni sitafanya hata vile nilimwambia mwaka huu sita sita kurejesta akawa tu amekaa anahuzunika kamwambia wachile kwanza tuangalie kwanza hali ya maisha yako utasikia tu vizuri na utasoma kama wengine Lucky for Lydia they got to hear about the MIG team just two weeks before they were set to arrive and were even luckier to get shortlisted for surgery Basi tarehe saba nikamregesha akamuona tena alafu akaniambia njoo tarehe kumi. Sasa ndio akaniambia kuna kuna hiyo tarehe saba akaniambia kuna madaktari ambao kwa wata, watakuja pale Mombasa Hospital nataka ni ku nikumbuka kwao kwa sababu ndio wakifanya hii operation ya mtoto. Nikamwambia ni sawa. Alafu tarehe kumi vile nilienda huyo daktari siku muona. Wale walikuwa kwa wakanipatia tena tarehe kumi na tano. Nilivoenda ndio sasa tukoanana na yeye. Alafu akaniambia au madaktari inaonekana bado hawajafanya kazi yao. Maana tulipokuwa tumeonana na yeye ile tarehe kumi aliniambia nije mpaka hapa nije niulize. Now just under 24 hours since she left the operating table, Lydia is in full recovery and the doctors are happy with her progress. But no one could be happier than her mother. Eh, hey, mimi sasa nasikia naye nasikia furaha ile ana tasijui yani yani ata sijui nitaelezea namna gani. Lakini kaa kuna mtu angeza kuingiana na roho yangu ile furaha nawisikia ni mimi peke yangu na Mungu ndiye anaona. Kitu tu ambacho kama ningependa kusema, ya yani nimeshukuru sana kwa ile huduma mtoto wangu amefanyiwa. Then there is baby Calvin. The youngest patient to receive treatment this time round. He is just two and a half months old. Just two weeks ago, when I realized my son was sick, I went to the clinic the way I used to normally go for the injection. <coughs> so, immunization injection. Rehema, his mother, tells us how it all began since his birth. He was very weak because he was not feeding well. Like, if he feeds, he gets tired. So, he was not feeding, feeling well. So, so, he was sick. So, I was told, because he's been 3.2 kgs since he, I got birth. So, 3.2 kgs, he's been there 3.2, 3.2. It was a very traumatizing time for her as the doctors did test after test. And on finding nothing wrong with Kelvin, they asked to have him tested for HIV. You have to go under this test when you're pregnant. They say you just go and do the test. So I went for the HIV test, it was negative. Mm, I brought the results to the doctor. I was told now to go for the X-ray. Hers were mixed feelings when the test results came back. Relief that they turned negative for HIV and confusion at not knowing what was wrong with her baby. I brought the results. They told me the, the heart was so big and I should go to Mombasa for echo. 
So I came to Mombasa Hospital for echo. They said it had a very big hole and it should be operated. No key, it has to be operated. She started to plan for a fundraising as the costs were too prohibitive for her. They told me it's very complicated. I should go to India for operation and I should look for some of 800,000 cash. So uh, it, I told my friends and they started like a harambe for me. And before it could happen, she got a call from the MIG team. Baby Kelvin's surgery was successful. And so happy is Rehema that her baby is out of danger. Now he's fine, very okay, I'm very happy. I know God is there, he's always been there. I'm really grateful, yes. And I really thank this charity work. She says she drew inspiration from the MIG team services and wishes to start a charity organization. When I go back to Voi, I have to go and uh, like if I go to the maternities and see children who have this problem, bring their names and let them know that it can be cured. So that's what I'll do, try and buy this machine, if possible, do a big, very big harambe <laughs> and see what I can do. Take a look at this little girl. Hard to believe that just four days before, she was lying in a theatre. This is six-year-old Abigail. Diagnosed at just three years of age, her mother Mary Wanyoike tells us how it all began. The diagnosis was done uh, when she was three years. So for those three years, it was hell. Because we didn't know what was disturbing her. She was ever coughing, fainting, conversing. So, and sometimes I would feel like the heart is beating so fast. A lot of noise, especially when she's sick. Uh, so when the problem was diagnosed, I was told there is no other... Uh, there's nothing else to be done but an operation is required. But the money that was us, we, we, we were not ready. They met the MIG team last year and were told to wait until this year. When we met the MIG team people last year, and they said it's not a very complicated problem, so it can wait until they come back this year. They took my number, they've been communicating until now that they have come. Her mother could not hide her joy at having her healthy little girl once more. You are not being forced to pay. It's if, if you are frontiering. It's like you frontier to pay something. They are okay. So they are doing a great job. They have really helped so many people. And we are happy. This is Kai Hero. His was a complicated surgery, as Mike explains to us. We'd left the ETA and the child was in the um, paediatric intensive care unit and we were on our way back when we had a phone call to say that we had to go back. He had a little problem which we took him back into theatre yesterday evening. They were able to fix the problem and as you see him here, he's recovering well and the doctors are happy. We also spoke to Bahati Hero, his mother, to get a little background on Kai's condition. Well, then, boy. Moyo Ango Sheramudogo Ada Mana Mr. Mam Yaka Nasar Nyakamini Mola Nasar and the one now to Darasra Pili Sasa Pili Sasa Macon and the Darasra Tatu, like in Ugonja, no Uchmuzidi. And how does she feel now that her little boy will be okay? Na felika, ni sawa, na shukuru kwa mungu, msaidia, kasa sana mune. Remember him? This is Mohammed. We had mentioned him earlier in the program. He had his surgery done last year when the MIG team came to the Kenyatta National Hospital. 
Abbas, Abbas, Abbas. He is now here for a follow-up and the doctors are happy with what they saw. He is in full recovery. I'm very happy with this result. <laughs> So how did Mohammed's problem begin? Atari zake, pulmonary artery na pulmonary vein ziko ziko nini ziko opposite way. Ila kupeleka damu chafu na kupeleka damu safi. Kisha alikuwa kuna tundo. Kisha na auto yake ilikuwa iko nyembamba. What followed was an anxious search for funds as they were told they had to take him to India for the operation. Tukamuliza amount akasema kama 1M hivi. Sasa ndo tukasema acha tukaangalie msaada kwa wake na mumuji lakini nani tukaenda tukifika wakasema sisi tutawafanyia mchango lakini kuna hawa wazungu watakuja mic team but so bad was his case they were initially reluctant to tackle the case mwanzo walisema hii mwadz case haiwezi kufanyika tutachukua hii hata the hat has four chambers sasa tutafanya hati yake ina three chambers kwanza kwa sababu hatuwezi ku switch off hizo new veins tukasema sawa vote vile bado mtoto wa poe tu kisha ndo wakaja wao wenyewe wakasema tumesema hiyo haiwezekani acha tutajaribu kufanya hivyo hivyo kwa sababu kama nitakuwa ni wenu itakuwa ni sawa na kama Mungu atakuwa shamchukua itakuwa ni sawa and meanwhile his parents waited anxiously for a whooping 8 hours 8 hours in theater akaenda akamfanyia akatoka successful operation ikafanyika vizuri kwa successful akatoka na yeye akasema hii tumefanyia na sote tumeshangaa na hiyo operation kumfanyia yeye manake imetoka successful hata watu wote manake hii operation it is the first operation to be done in East Africa Curiosity did not allow us to live without having a word with Mr. David Anderson, the cardiologist under whom all these operations take place. We come here uh, and we go back home no richer or poorer in, in sort of pounds dollar sense, uh, but we are hugely rewarded in a personal sense for what we are doing. The, uh, the joy of um, you know relieving a terrible problem for the families the parents before we wind up this documentary we meet a group of people who play a very important albeit non-medical role alongside the meek team they are known as the pediatric support group Founded in 1998 at the Aga Khan Hospital, the group's intention was to offer support to the patients. I approached Aga Khan Hospital and said I would like to start a support group where um, I can help children who, who have, um, who, whose parents require support, emotional support and um, moral support basically because I had a child who was born with a congenital heart condition and when I was going through this I had no one to talk to and in fact I didn't talk to anyone and in that time I just totally grayed. I had a child who had um, asthma and that time we were we had illnesses for all different um, groups and then we all started concentrating more on heart which we thought was really really an important issue. It was no easy task since most people wanted financial support which the group could not afford. Generally it's not a very African culture to say I will support you by emotional and moral support. So when parents came to us, um, you know, they would say I don't want moral and emotional, I want financial. What does their job typically entail? It's a full circle. As soon as Meek finished their clinics, they've left all the reports with us because they go back to the UK. So we will meet up, go through all the reports and decipher which children are urgent surgeries, can wait a while, which are just for checkups and which are discharged, have no problems with their hearts. The ones which are priority, we have to arrange for them um, to go to Mata or to Kenyatta, of for which we even need funds because like the ones which were done here were sponsored by a sponsor but now is the time where we have to look for sponsors for these children what challenges do they face during their line of work there are some children that we don't manage to do and there are some children that we lose as well on the way and we've lost a child at a hospital as well because there was no bed space or there was no theater time and that does affect us 
And just how many children have passed through their hands? Today, I would say that on an average since 2002, um, we have seen almost at least 800 patients over the time, of which I would say we've done about an average of 10 surgeries a year. We could not help but wonder how do they make ends meet and what hopes do they have for the future? Through do uh, generous donors, through our members who help us to um, approach uh, businessmen who, can, who are willing to help us out and we've sent them to Madras um, and to Mata Hospital in Nairobi as well and a few to Kenyatta Hospital. And there you have it, the hard work done by the medical and educational aid to Kenya team in just under two weeks. And it doesn't end there. They will be back later in the year to continue this noble cause. <laughs>